Right, hello guys. So, <laughs> you don't know it, but I do. This is the second time doing this now. I recorded everything yesterday, and as I was editing it today, I decided I did not like it whatsoever. So basically, I had a recommendation recently to do a video on how I maintain my turtle tank. Now I thought that was a really good idea, so thank you for the suggestion. But I filmed all of it in one piece yesterday, and I just don't like it. It's a bit too long-winded. I was... I was kind of looping around in my head what I'm leading on to next. So let's try again. <laughs> this time we're going to do it in a couple parts as well. So I'm going to focus on. Right. <laughs> I'm going to focus on algae and some of the cleaning in this one, and then in the next one I can focus on some other bits and some of the some of the chemistry of all of it. If Marie stops splashing around and going nuts at me like this. And then I might upload all of it in one big one, if in case anyone wants to see all of it together at one point anyway. So that way, if there's anyone that's looking for a specific reason, a specific thing for their turtles, it'll be much easier to find. So. <laughs> so the downside is, we cleaned this all yesterday, it's looking spick and span, it's looking great now. But I'll use some clips from the other video and we'll, we'll still go through it, we'll explain it properly. But basically, when it comes to maintaining a turtle tank, First thing I always start with, personally, turn my filter and heaters off, and I get my trusty sponge. <laughs> now, quick thing, because I've completely forgotten, I've already skipped past it. All the equipment we're using in this, sponge, siphon, watering can, pet safe, tap safe, which is a chlorine and heavy metal remover, and a water, water bucket. I think that's everything. <laughs> Otherwise, I start off with my pad. This is a pad designed for glass tanks. Do your research. If you get a pad for glass tanks and use it on an acrylic, it will scratch it up. If you do the opposite and get the wrong one, it can scratch the glass up. Now, my glass looks pretty horrendous. Ignore that. <laughs> this tank's about 12 years old. I've had it for a long time. I've resealed it a few times. It's been through around seven house moves, so it's a good tank. <laughs> now, if you're like me and you live in a hard water area, you might get lime scale building up, especially around the water's edge, sometimes higher up where the bubbles come up and pop and you get water droplets and this, that, the other. I always start with that. If you get rid of it, if you do it every week and you keep on top of it, it's so easy. If you leave it and you let it build up, you're going to need to whip out a chisel or a razor blade. It, it becomes like concrete. This stuff is a nightmare when you let it build up. And then before you do any kind of water change, you want to go to the algae. If you get rid of the algae now, just go around, scrape it off the inside of the tank, clean it up. That'll get it suspended in the water, so when you do your water change, you'll be taking out a lot of that algae with it. If you do it afterwards, the algae is still going to be in the water, it's going to come back a lot faster, a lot heavier, so get rid of it first. Now, a quick thing on algae. It's one thing that a lot of turtle owners, in my experience at least, seem to struggle with. Now the thing about it, there are some products on the market, there's things like algae remover, algae killer, algae preventer, I think they're all rubbish. <laughs> I don't use a single one, I do not recommend a single one. And it's for a very simple reason. When it comes to things like algae, instead of using chemicals to counteract it and potentially creating another problem, we're using chemicals that are going to get rid of it for now and then it's going to come back later on. Go to the root of the cause. Find out what's starting it, what's causing it, and fix it there. If you get rid of the cause, it's going to be so much easier. Now, my tank, with the footage from yesterday, I clean algae from my tank about once every three weeks. It's, it's really not very prominent for me, it's not a big issue for me. biggest reason algae isn't an issue for me. So when it comes to algae, it's the same as any other aquatic plant. It needs light, it needs water obviously, it needs nutrients in the water, and it needs CO2. Algae is a sign of imbalance, essentially. It's a sign of excessive nutrients, excessive light, excessive CO2. It's almost opportunistic. If one of these are out of balance, if there's too much of one, it makes use of it and it takes a hold. The easiest way to counteract it is one, 
only use the lighting that you need. So I've got UV light and a heat lamp because Marie needs both of those. If you're using something like an LED strip because you want to promote plant growth, you might need to tweak things about it. It's all about creating balance and it is just playing about with it because everyone's circumstance is different. I can't tell you a set formula that's gonna work because your tank, your water, your nutrients is all gonna be different. So when it comes to my tank, the biggest thing helping me is these, the Elodia Denza. Now Elodia Denza is quite a fast growing plant and fast growing plants absorb a lot of nutrients every day. So what that is doing, that's creating a lot of competition for the algae. So the amount of Elodia Denza I have now typically work well for me, around roughly this size clump. When I have more than that, some of it starts decomposing and it suffers because there's not enough nutrients, there's not enough CO2 for it. As far as lighting goes, it's not very demanding, so the UV is absolutely fine for it. But this is where you kind of have to tweak things. So when I have less Elodia Denza, I get a lot more algae. What that tells me is there's so many nutrients in the water from marine pass passing waste, from food that's not being eaten, from the fish waste, from this, that, the other, decomposing plants. That excess nutrients is then being picked up by the algae and that's why when I have less plants than this, when, when some die, when Marie eats some, the algae suddenly takes a hold of the whole tank. And the video I did a couple weeks ago, was it the death of a dozen one? But the one where I didn't have many plants in, at that point I was cleaning the algae once every roughly four days. Now I've added the plants back in, I'm doing it once, roughly a month again, so... And Elodia Denza is perfectly turtle safe, provides the fish cover, marie cover, a bit of enrichment, so when the filter's on and it's swirling around, her environment's almost, almost, almost changing. Her environment's almost always changing, so it's, it's kind of natural, it's a nice bit, of, um, nice bit of enrichment for her. And it does also brighten the tank up a bit, so I do quite like it. Now what a lot of people do, with, especially with aquariums and turtles, they get things like sucking fish, things like plecos, otosynclus, they get shrimp, they get snails. I wouldn't recommend that either. One, snails and shrimp are on the turtle's diet. They are the most natural part of the diet, so I typically wouldn't expect them to survive. I wouldn't expect them to be around long enough to do the job. Not to mention, a lot of them are tropical, don't match the same requirements that Marie would have. Now when it comes to sucking fish, it's actually quite a unique circumstance. So. You might be able to Google it and find some pictures, but I've seen instances before where the sucking fish latches onto the turtle shell. Maybe it's just a place it wants to latch, maybe there's algae on it, maybe there's this, that, the other reason. I don't know why. But they can cause quite a lot of damage doing it. And not to mention, your turtle might eat them anyway, which could be harmful depending on what you choose. A lot of things like Placos and Otosynclus, they have a lot of barb. Like Otosynclus have small barbs on their face facing the opposite way. That could damage your turtle. Plecos have their own unique defense mechanisms, they have the dorsal fins, their spines. It's all things, it's just not worth the risk. Just don't do it. If, if you're putting fish in there to clean the algae up just because you don't want to grab a sponge, that's reckless, don't. <laughs> now I think for now that's the bulk of what I'm going to talk about in this video. The next video will be up as soon as possible and we're going to be linking it in a bit more. So the algae is thriving on nitrates. Nitrates derive from the turtle and the fish because the food that we put in the waste they produce releases ammonia and it all comes back round full cycle to nitrate. The plants are absorbing that nitrate, it's their main source of food, so that's what they're consuming. But that's where we're going to leave off and I'm going to talk about that next time. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy this one. I hope this wasn't too short, but I really didn't like the other version that I did, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah thank you for the video idea let me know if you have any questions let me know if you have any other suggestions i will be uploading part two soon which is going to talk about the water the filter the changes and a lot of the science behind it a lot of the chemistry the things you need to know as a turtle keeper yeah otherwise thanks for watching So for anyone that doesn't know, Marie is my rescue must musk turtle. So her shell isn't exactly in the best condition, but it's getting better and better the longer she's